What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving on into Timberborn, which is releasing very, very soon to Steam. This is a game about a colony of beavers that are going out in order to create their own colony and survive off the fat of the land. You're going to deal with crises along the way, like droughts and disasters and things of that nature. And then the game is also highly customizable in that, like... The buildings are sort of like Legos. They all attach together. They can go on top of themselves. You'll be building scaffoldings to access things that are higher up off the ground because apparently beavers never invented internal stairs. And so this is one of those games where, like, no two players are going to design a colony that looks exactly the same just due to, like, the sheer variety of things you can do to get building A into spot B. And so anyways, we're going to dive on in and take a look today. If you wanted to get the game for yourself, I have a link for you down below in the description so you can check that on out. On top of that, you can also check out my Discord and you can go to my Twitter and my Twitch stream if you wanted to get a hold of me at any hour of the day, unless I'm sleeping, okay? I'm a little grumpy when I'm sleeping. Don't, no, don't ping me when I'm sleeping, but like other than that, you all good. Uh, let's go ahead and start off a new game and see if this is something that you wanted to try out. Uh, we have two factions. We have the Folk Tales and we have the Iron Teeth. Work hard, work hard is their motto. A motto so nice they said it twice. Okay. And then the folk tales are comfort, food, and sturdy wood. Yeah, that's my motto too, man. That's every every day I wake up and hope for exactly those things. Fair enough. Uh, let's go into the planes and we'll play on the default map just to see how this goes. Uh, the game is not random. Is the game random? I don't know. We'll take a look. We'll take a look. I played a little bit earlier and I'll recognize the map if it's the same every single time. Okay, so here we are, and here is our town center. This is the beating heart of everything that we have and everything that we are. And yeah, the map is the same every single time, so there you go. Good to know. All right, fair enough. First thing we need to do is we need to get a layout going here. Everything in this game revolves around paths. If you don't have paths, the beavers just kind of stand around and they're like, I'm confused. I know you want me to chop wood, but how do I do that way over there when there is not tilled earth for me to walk on? And so, like, we gotta make sure that we have paths going all the places that we want them to go. Uh, I am gonna kind of get rid of the tutorial. It doesn't matter. I know what I'm doing. Uh, we need to get some water rocking because we have some very... Th they will die by, like, tomorrow if we don't get some water rocking. And so I highly recommend that we do exactly that. Uh, we need to run a path down here first. And so I would put a path down to, like, right there. I don't know if that's going to be too long or too short. But we'll get a water pump going. And as you can see, it actually has, like, vascularities or whatever. Or at least, like, nav meshes that are put in on top of the path so that you can see how people are going to be working that stuff. Unfortunately, the water pump is made out of logs. And so, like, we need to uh, find a way. And so in order to get this thing popped off, we just, we need water. Because every now and again, a beaver needs a drink, okay? But the water is made out of logs. And we have no way to get logs right now. We're going to make ourselves a lumberjack flag. And so we'll put down two lumberjack flags right there. The other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a log pile for them to store those logs in. So we'll put that right there. They are going to hustle on over here and they'll take care of it. As of right now, we have five people that are unemployed. So we're going to need to take care of that as well. Our unemployment might be ever so slightly high in the lands of Beaverton right now. I actually don't even know what the name of my colony is in all honesty. Couldn't tell you. I'm going to put it on the middle speed real fast so this stuff starts happening. And we've got you guys set up. Now they need a place to chop trees at. So we'll go and designate this entire area for clear cutting because we are absolutely going to need that wood. I probably don't need that right there, that right there, that right there. Yeah, we just we don't need to make that happen. I may build some stairs to go up to here and get that wood, but... I feel like we're solid for right now, so you guys go ahead and chop down some trees. And we should have somebody going over here to build the log storage as well. And there we go. Perfect. And these trees should start to come down really, really soon. And they'll haul the logs back on over here. And as you can see, our beavers will run on out, and they will make the water pump. That way, everybody can get themselves a drink. I don't think there's a more convenient way for us to do this. And so I think the water pump has replaced. There used to be like a drinking spot in the earlier alphas that just gave you like endless water and they just went down to it. And really the cost that you paid for that was the fact that they had to spend time walking over to the water spot. But this time around, not the case. Uh, the other thing that we're going to need to get hammered out about as soon as possible is we need to get some crops growing. Otherwise, food is going to diminish very, very quickly. So what I would do is I would make just a little carrot farm over here. 
just a just a nice little carrot farm and so we can drop a carrot farm in right there yeah that looks okay to me that should be enough carrots and then the other thing that we need in order for the food to work is that we need a farmhouse uh, so we'll take a farmhouse we can plop it in right there it is going to be a little bit expensive on the log front but i think that with these guys working over here we should be able to get it done at a reasonable rate as long as the water gets done, I'm okay with whatever happens next. I don't really mind too much. Uh, we could gather berries off of all these bushes over here. I will do that. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. But for right now, I want all my logs and everything else to be... Hey, there we go. Now we're generating water. Good. This thing will store 15 water so that when our beavers get thirsty, they can just run on over here and water it up. I would suggest that maybe we go with like a path right here just to kind of cordon that off from the rest of town. And then the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to need water storage. And there's just flatly not really any way around that. Uh, this game has droughts. The droughts are catastrophic. Like, legitimately. Uh, I would recommend building at least four of these. But we've got a little bit of time to play around with. And so I'm going to kind of wait before I do it, even though it might backfire on me. I've got enough for one more log chopper right here, so I'm going to add another log chopper because I sense a throughput problem with getting enough resources to actually build the things that I want to build. And then once we're all filled up on logs, and we have like 30 or 40 of them sitting around, that's when I'm going to kind of diminish these spots, and we'll just rely on a trickle of logs to keep us at that level for a little while. Yeah, perfect. You guys just get on out there. Gather me up some logs, my boys. Gather me up some logs. The farmhouse is on its way up. So that's fantastic. We'll have somebody farming very, very shortly. There we go, and our farmhouse is going up now. Uh, we only have, like, a couple of beavers to work there. We're actually completely and totally unemployed right now. But as you see, they'll start putting down carrot farms. I don't know if the crop is going to come in fast enough to where I can completely skip and avoid doing any type of berry farming. I guess we'll find out. I also don't know if the woods are going to hold out on that side. The other thing that we could plausibly do is get this little patch down here once it runs out. Uh, these trees do regrow. If you clear out the stumps by using a dig command, uh, they will not come back. But if you don't worry about the dig command, you should be all right. And so we've got 15 logs right there. Let's go ahead and start securing our water supply. I think that's going to be just principally important. There we go. Four water tanks right there. That's a lot of logs. It's going to take us quite a bit to get these up and running. But with the amount of time it's going to take them to stockpile most of this, I think we'll be okay. But that's like the big task of the day that needs to get done. Our carrots are in. They are growing. They are 6% grown right now. So I don't think there's going to be any way to avoid getting like a berry harvester. And just picking up like a little trickle of food while we wait for our first harvest to come on in. I'd like for our harvest to be up and above like maybe a hundred or so pretty soon and as you can see the guy that works inside the water pump he's going to run up here and he's going to put water inside the tank that way we have water stored up so that if something bad happens say a drought which is guaranteed to happen within the first like 10 or 15 days uh, we will have the water supply in order to survive that kind of crisis the developers included that as i understand it i've been reading through some forums and whatnot they included it so that it was clear that this game was not going to be easy effectively like they put in the first big drought that wipes out a lot of new player colonies because like they want you to understand that like hey this game is coming for you this is not like a peaceful relaxing city builder this is a city builder where you're gonna have to be dealing with issues you know, you're going to have to work around that, and there's no real way to avoid facing it. All right, so the water supply has been preserved. We're good to go right here. I think 120 water plus the 15 that goes in here, like 135 water, should be okay to keep us up and trucking before we run into any issues. Uh, the next thing that's going to be kind of important, I think, is that we're going to have to build housing around here. Unfortunately, it's nighttime, so we're kind of like, they're just dithering around doing nothing right now. Uh, they have, like, free time at night, really. And so we got to kind of, like, wait for that to be over and done with. However, I think we can start putting in our first little residential burb over here to make people a little bit happier. And so I think I'll start with that. Food is looking a little bit low. It is looking a little bit rough. Uh, so as soon as these houses go up, I'll probably make a berry gatherer. Yeah, I'll probably make a little offshoot on the path down here. And we'll just put a little berry gatherer down on this side. Eh, plant trees, bushes, berries. No, don't like worry too much about that. But I would like to have a gatherer flag over here. 
and then I'll get rid of one of my wood choppers once the food starts to look like it's going to be getting a little bit low. The first house is raised. There you go. We need 12 more logs, and then the second house is going to be raised. And the cool thing about this is I'll show you an, the modularity of this entire thing and the reason why I gave kind of the Lego correlation. Uh, you can take buildings, and you can stack them. You can have them stacked. You can have them in whatever shape you want. And then once you get down to the pads and whatnot, you'll be able to research kind of things like scaffolds, platforms. And so, like, as you play this game for longer and longer, your little colony of beavers is going to kind of be like a Peter Pan Lost Boy colony with little bridges and ropes and things running all over the place. There's people on the ground level. There's people that live up above them. There's people that live up on platforms and things of that nature. Uh, there's automation to this game. There's definitely kind of like a clockwork cog thing going on. Uh, that you're going to want to take care of as time goes along. Oh, cool. We had one guy who was unemployed, so now he's bringing in berries. Very nice. Well, he should be able to gather enough berries to keep us alive, hopefully, until the harvest comes in. Like, how much is it growing per day? It's growing a lot. It's already 61% grown, so I think we're in solid shape right there. The next thing we're going to want is we have two more children that are going to grow up. So, ideally, we have two more jobs that we need to allocate. Um, I don't think we need multiple berry gatherers. And in fact, this guy is about to finish off all the berries down here. If there's no berries on the bush, there's nothing to gather. And so once he brings that back up and in, what we're going to... Oh, he's going through over to there. Look at you over here, man. Look at you being a go-getter. Okay, so that's going to be the last one that he can reach. And what I'd like to do is we need to break this down now. And then we need to run a path kind of just out this way. There we go. Now that we got the path out that way, we're going to put in another gatherer flag right there. Hopefully that'll get built before they kind of clock out for the day and stop working on stuff. But if not, it's no biggie because I think even where we're at right now, we should be okay on food. Like to my eye, we seem to be doing all right. Oh good, we've got one unemployed person. Very cool. Yeah, he's bringing in berries. He's doing what he does. We've got 51 logs all ready to go. Let's finish off some of these houses that we've got. Oh, that's a farmhouse. That's that's a house for farms, not a house for beavers. Okay, I'm going to put in another house right here and another house right here so that everybody has a home. And everybody can stop being a grumple stiltskin about the, ho about the housing market because, man, they have been writing me on this. Beavers just be all up in my business, sending me emails, being like... And like, I don't know how to speak beaver, dude. I don't even know how I got this job. I just showed up one day and they like handed me like a scepter and they were like, yeah, the king of the beavers now. Okay, whatever. I guess I'm the king of the beavers now. Food's looking a little rough, but with an entire day of berry gathering. And we've also, dude, our first carrot crop is coming in today too, like verified. So like, I think we'll be okay on food. I don't think we need to panic just yet. There you go. Get them logs in place. For every beaver a home, and a home for every beaver. Such is our creed. Okay. All of our houses are up and rocking right now. Very, very nice. So how come nobody's gathering berries over here? Oh, because the berry storage is full. That would explain why nobody's gathering the berries. Uh, we need a storehouse. That's what we need. I totally forgot. All right, so let's have a warehouse right here. They also have no place to put the carrots. So this is one of those things I probably should have built sooner. I had a feeling that I was going to forget something during the course of this video. I, I really sincerely did. I was like, something's going to go wrong here. And I don't know what's going to go wrong, but something is going to go wrong. There we go. The storehouse is up and rocking. So now they will drag berries back, and like our haulers will make sure that there's not like a conflux of berries inside this area and as you can see our food is already skyrocketing our water is slowly accumulating we're not doing amazing on water but i think it's time for us to do kind of our first clockwork enterprise that's what i feel like so we're going to go to the power menu and all we have for right now is a water wheel but the water wheel is actually kind of cool uh, we're gonna have to like get it kind of figured out if we want this to work but I think that's a decent spot right there. Build more paths or a new district. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get right on that, Chief. The other spot that I could potentially put it is right here, but then I might have to bulldoze trees. 
in order to get things working. And I don't know if I want to bulldoze a tree just yet. Uh, we'll take that right there, so that'll add another to our unemployment list. Yeah. We'll try that. It seems like they're building it, so as long as they're happy, I'm happy. Food is fantastic right now. Water's looking pretty great, too, so I think we've got a pretty solid future in front of us. They have social needs, so every single beaver in this game has stuff that they want. Uh, the game has kind of like a little Anno upgrade system where their well-being is how you unlock progression and get, like, new tribes of beavers and stuff like that that have different skills or whatever. And, and so anyways, they have a need for fun and they have a need for social life. If we can get everybody a social life, their fertility will go up and they'll start having kids, which is going to increase our workforce and make our lives a little bit easier when it comes to populating jobs. So let's take a look at leisure and see what we can do here. So we've got a campfire. I do think that the campfire is an option. It only has space for five beavers. But, it takes 15 logs for each one of those. Foof! That's a lot of logs, brother. That's a lot of logs, brother. Yeah, y'all need to get that carrot harvest in. That carrot harvest is taking a hot minute right now. I may have overdone it with the size of this field right here. I could make it go faster or slower with a few more farmers, but... Eh. I think I'll probably queue up some of these lower areas for... For kind of... Hacking away as well. They can't reach most of that, but they can reach some of it. And it'll give them something to do instead of just standing around being idle. It'll bring in a, like a little trickle of logs, too. 107 water. You love to see it. As soon as water wheel's up and ready to rock, I'll tell you what, brother. We're going to be cooking with fire out here. All right, so we'll move that over to there. This game does have like an engineering component to it where you are going to have to master rotary assemblies effectively. Uh, gears on gears being... There's gears on the end of logs turning other gears. And a big part of this game and like the fun of it is the engineering of figuring out a solution of how you're going to get a rotor to turn in a location where you're blocked. And so, like, I was watching Shenrir play this game, and, like, he had, like, assemblies that were going up over the top of buildings, then descending back down with platform sort of skiffs that kept them elevated up in the air. Like, there's a, there's a lot of things you can do in this game to kind of fiddle with stuff. Hey, somebody had a kid. Mazel. All right. Hey, there we go. All right, so we got that right there. And then I need to keep this clear because rotors cannot run over the top of roads, at least not where we are in the game right now. The next thing we need to do is we need to start getting science points. Uh, science points are listed up here at the top. The science points are what make it so that you can buy new technologies, and so that's going to be kind of important. I need to rotate the camera back down so that I can see a little bit better. Does this have... It does not have a socket on the back of it. That kind of sucks but I can live with it. Uh, so what we need is we put that right there, and you see how there's a socket right there? Basically, you can only connect the rotors in through the sockets, and this won't function unless you get it hooked up to power, so we need to hook it up to power. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a T-junction right there so that we still have an out to our system uh, so that we can connect this to something else, and then we're going to take a straight log and a straight log and put that in right there, and then this will turn this log, which turns that gear, which turns that over to there, so on and so forth. And all of a sudden, you've got a functioning system. Huzzah! Kurahi! All that fun stuff. Uh, the reason why we need this is because we are going to need to make a timber mill pretty soon. If we don't have a lumber mill, uh, we're not going to be able to make planks. And planks are kind of like the foundation of all the scaffolds and things you can build up over the top of other things in this game. So without them, you're not going to be getting a whole lot done. Spoiler alert. Good, you guys keep gathering logs. I've noticed that our log supply is looking somewhat scant right now. But I believe in all of you to get it finished off. One researcher will live inside of here. Hey, we hit level six. All right. So the social life should make it so beavers can now meet each other and become beaver couples and have beaver kids. I don't even know what a baby beaver is called, dude. I don't know what you call it. Is it like piglets? You know, like beavlets? Or... Is it like one of those things where they've got like a special term like kit? I don't know. A beaver lived inside my dad's backyard one time. My dad lives by a creek and beavers moved in and they were chewing down all the trees on his property that were like really old and like really, really valuable and all that kind of stuff. 
And so, like, uh, he had to work with the government to get rid of the beaver because beavers are protected. You're not allowed to mess with beavers, basically, uh, because messing with beavers is how you end up with waterways and whatnot blocked. And so you physically, like, can't, like, shoot a beaver and kill it on your property uh, because it, like, messes with the ecosystem or whatever. And so he had to kind of work with the government to get rid of this, like, pod of beavers that were living in the creek behind his house just chewing and destroying everything. And it was a headache. It was, uh, beavers are a problem when they show up somewhere where you don't want beavers to be. I'll tell you what, all right? When beavers show up in places that they are not supposed to be at, it can be a little bit of a nightmare. What can I do with the space that I have available? I don't know. Um, we're generating science now, so that's good. Uh, we can also, you can actually connect other things this way too on this side. Like this should become active in turn. Uh, so that this can act as a pass-through, effectively. Um, what we need is a lumber mill. I mean, I feel like that's our, our next goal. We just got to figure out where the plugs are on the lumber mill. It looks like the plug on the lumber mill... Actually, that works out okay. Surprisingly, that is not an awful option. Yeah, so we can actually get a lumber mill, like, right there, and it's already hooked up to the path. And then really all that we need to do is we need to get two little uh, two little shafts right here to connect like so. And we're golden. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. 113 water inside the stockpile right now. You love to see it. We got two unemployed beavers. Uh, our food is kind of dwindling, but unfortunately there's no more berry bushes around until I invent stairs. And unfortunately, stairs are high technology, okay? They are very, very difficult to figure out. Now, the downside to this is that we now have no way to get from over here to over here, but we've got the path up there, so we'll just connect it that way. And there you go. They're inside of there. And you can keep an eye on your power draw right here. And it looks like we actually have enough left where if I put a T-junction in right here, I could get, like, another building and hook it up too, I think. I don't know if we're going to need that many saw, like, many sawmill things. I also don't know if we're producing enough logs to really make that worth it, but, like, we may have to figure that out. Is there, like, a better, more efficient way to lumberjack? So there's a gear workshop, we've got a paper mill, and we've got a printing press. Good lord, God help you if you've got a paper mill in your neighborhood. There's a place I used to drive through all the time when I was going down the 5 that had, like, a paper mill in it, dude. And, bro, it reeks. It reeks real, real bad. It doesn't reek as bad as that big set of, like, there's, like, a... You know, there's like a one-hour stretch down in the California interior where it's just nothing but cattle farms, and that definitely smells worse. But, that being said, um, paper mill smells pretty bad, too. It's not, a, it's not a great smell. It's not one of those smells that you're like, yeah, that would make a good cologne. Not unless you're sick, anyways. Uh, we can connect this path over here, I think. And so we'll do that. We have 30 science ready to rock. Stairs are going to cost us 70 science, so we're not really pumping out that much science right now. I kind of wish we were producing more science. I think there's an argument to be made that right here I could put another science building and just have that gear work right there work perfectly fine. So, like, if I put that right there... We could have two science buildings. Can you put this? Oh, you can put that on top of a building, too. Nice. Like I said, everything in this game is, like, modular. So that's, like, one of the really fun, cool things about the game. Yeah, I feel like we can probably do another one. Let's do it. I would like for my science to come in more rapidly. That way I can develop new beaver tech. All right, so we'll put that right there. Beaver tech is kind of like battle tech, but, like, different. You know, weaponized beavers all shooting at each other with, you know... Um, 50 millimeter cannons and stuff. You know what I mean? Firing off those LRM-40s. Uh, I need this to go away. I know I just built it, but it needs to die. Bye-bye. You are dead. Um, let's go ahead and we need to connect. I need a T-junction right here. I don't know why I ever bother with the elbows. Because I always end up needing a T-junction -jun down the road. I should just preemptively install T-junctions. But whatever. We'll put in an elbow.
It'll be fine. Everything will work out okay. Tell me that you're alright. Building things is alright. Oh, please tell me that you're alright. Building lots of stuff here. Getting some carrots because we are hungry. I think they can walk underneath these, though, in order to build it. I was a little bit worried that they wouldn't have the directionality they need right there in order to make that work, but I think we're still good. I kind of want to increase their work hours. 16 hours a day, though. Like, if I bump it up to, like, 18, that just makes me feel cruel and callous. Like, I'm no longer, like, the beaver lord. I'm, like, the beaver master if I do that. The hell does that mean? Oh, there's a drought incoming? Okay. Well, y'all should gather up some water then, because we're going to need it. Of that, I can virtually assure you. Maybe I'll even slap in another water tank right there, just so I can assuage my panic. Hey, and there's our science back up and running. So we should be getting double the science now, and we've made like this cool little assembly right here that looks really rad and moves around. This game has a lot of fun details in it. I mean, if you look at the windows, the windows have clearly been chewed. <laughs> and so they've been, like, chewed on in order to make the windows. Like, if you take a look at night when they go into their houses, the lights come on when they're inside their houses. Like, this game is full of just, like, wonderful little details like that. And you know me. I'm a detail-oriented guy when it comes to games like this. Always have been, and I think that I always will be, in all honesty. I am a firm believer that the little details are really what make the dream work with a game, and what really is conducive as bedding to sort of the sweet sleep of immersion, effectively. And so anyways, that's always things that I'm looking for with games like this. Stuff like the campfires going out when they're not during their social time. Stuff like that. Uh, the drought, unfortunately, is going to ruin, like, everything for us. I'm not positive we have enough food, but we only have a day and a half before the drought hits. So... It might get worse before it gets better. Ooh, child, things are going to get easier. That's a lie. They're not. They're going to get worse. This drought is going to be awful. Oh, yeah, look at that right there. There's already some natural stairs. Oh, I could have gone and got those berries, dude. I am a dish. Man. I am terrible at video games. All right, well, what are you going to do? Uh, did I mention these are post-apocalyptic beavers? Did I at any point bring that up? <laughs> there's, there's, there's busted buildings all over the place over on this side. Uh, these are, humans are dead. I'm just letting you know we are super dead, okay? There's a reason that beavers have succeeded us, and it's because the humans are dead. Uh, to make a little musical jaunt. Yeah, we're gonna run out of food during this drought. Feels bad. I can never get the size of my farms right. Like, I always under-farm, basically, with this game. Like, I either over-farm or I under-farm every single time. But this is Timberborn. I hope you guys liked it. I think this game shows a lot of potential. Like, there's... It's sick. Like, I like what they're playing around with, with all the mechanics and kind of the scaffolds and buildings on top of buildings so that you can make, like, condo complexes and stuff. Like, I really, really like the idea that they're playing around with, and I think that it's really swell. And so, anyways, definitely if you're into building games, make sure you check this out. I promise you will not be disappointed. Like, you'll probably have a really, really good time with it fiddling with stuff. Uh, I've got stairs right there. Yeah, dude, let's take some... Oh, I don't have a scaffold, though, dude. I was going to put the stairs up there, and then, like, I was going to do things, but now I can't. Weak. Well, I'm glad we're all going to starve to death. I can't do the things I want to do. I hope we all starve. Um, I'll see you all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. But in the meantime, have yourself a great day, and I'll see you then.